and welcome to the last episode of the year of the Built Environment Marketing Show, hosted by me, Ayo Abbas. I'm a digitally-led marketing consultant, content creator, speaker and trainer, and I run my own consultancy called Abbas Marketing, who specialise in working with built environment firms just like yours. I set up this podcast in July 2020 during lockdown one to throw a spotlight on some of the best marketing that I think happens in built environment firms and basically to share the love. One of the things I really want people to know is that you don't have to spend a fortune to get good results when it comes to marketing. There are so many tools coming on stream and really it's about having good ideas and knowing how to implement and execute them really, really well. So that's one of the reasons that I really want this show to continue because A, I enjoy making it, but also I think it's really good to share best practice amongst firms. Today's episode will be a bit different than normal. I'll be looking back on the podcast in numbers, sharing some of the standout moments from my guests this year and also some bloopers right at the end. The Built Environment Marketing Show in Numbers. It's been a busy year for the show this year. I've started to do more solo episodes to mix things up a bit and also still continuing with interviewing guests. And I've even gone out and met a few people in person to record, which has been really exciting too. So the podcast in numbers. I've released 16 episodes. There have been two and a half thousand downloads. I've had 14 guests come onto the show. Thank you so much. I've also had a total download for the show over the three years of 11 and a half thousand. And my top episode was the interview with Tristan Carfrey from Arab. I'd love to know what your favourite episode was or what guest you enjoyed listening to the most or even learnt from the most. So do get in touch with me at io at abassmarketing.com and tell me what you think of the show and your ideas and topics that I should cover next year. 2023 Key Themes and Discussions AI, Language Learning Models and ChatGPT 2023 has been the year of AI and the mainstreaming of LLMs. Well, actually, they've been around for a while, but with the launch of ChatGPT, they've really, really raised to the fore, so everyone's been talking about them. And also, they impact business as well as marketing. Let's start off with a clip from episode 44, where I talk about ChatGPT. So when you start to think about ChatGPT and AI, you can either see it as a threat and want to run away and just put your head in the sand and just say, it's not happening, it's rubbish, you'll always need to pay us. Or you can kind of sit there and say, what can these tools take away from me that is mundane, that is repetitive, and that is a baseline thing that I don't need to be doing? I mean, for me, I'm a senior level marketer with 21 years experience. There's a lot of base level stuff that a machine could actually do and get me to where I need. And then I can focus on the strategy and the ideas and then kind of bringing things together in a kind of novel way, which is actually where I add value to my clients and focus on those efforts and and, and use my resources there. And I think that's what we've all got to do. We've got to understand, I guess, where the tools can really take the strain and where we as humans can really add value. And that is the real opportunity. That is where we can really show our value as specialists or our value as marketeers. And we can kind of streamline processes and make them way more efficient and just get better at what we do. So I personally see them as an opportunity for marketeers. If you're interested in marketing tools, do check out the 12 Days of Christmas download on my website, which is www.abassmarketing.com forward slash resources. I'll share a link in the show notes too. It's got a lot of great info about the tools that we use to run our businesses and marketing firms. Storytelling and content. I'm a huge fan of storytelling, and I even got to run a session on it as part of Architizer's Future Fest in September. I'll share a link in the show notes if you want to watch the replay. There's been a huge shift towards storytelling and humanising marketing, as I shared in episode 57. For me, it's about kind of storytelling. So understanding, you know, what it is about you or what it is about that visual that you're trying to communicate. And also understanding who it is for. Who's your target audience? What do they need to know about it? What things, what messages do you need to convey to them? And really just breaking it down in that way. And then that's what your narrative is and you can build out your story. Um, and I think it's just understanding that really. Um, and then finding ways to tell that story and, and what the language and tone of voice that you want to use. And that will work with that audience. So it's all about that audience. How do you communicate with them in a language mm-hmm. that they will understand? Yeah, with brilliant. them rather than you, which is the hardest part. 
And now on to a master visual storyteller. And that's got to be Chris Simmons from episode 58, talking all about what he does on Instagram. There's still that sort of subset of architects, which are, you know, navel gazing type, you know, big language and, and misunderstood geniuses and artists and stuff. And I think if the one thing I can do with, with some of my work is to kind of get away from that idea and just show that they're all just normal people trying to do good jobs and help things. And yeah, you know, but there are lots of people doing good things about that. You know, there are a growing amount of architects that are a lot more open on social media. And, and I think that is kind of one of the kind of joys of the social media side of things is that things are shown a lot more, like just being able to um, see behind the scenes and, and you know, how things are actually put together and, and a lot of the mysteries kind of taken out of it. And it's, you know, there isn't this kind of gatekeeping thing of, of, you know, you can't see behind the curtain because then we won't be able to charge you money for it. It's, yeah. it's more like we're going to share how we work and why we're special and why we're good at what we do. And, and, and you can be involved in the journey. And in the final clips of this section, we hear from Ellie Sharp and Andy Matthews talking about the need to keep things real and be human. People aren't necessarily looking on websites anymore. They're looking on Instagram. They want to see the real story, who the people are, yeah. um, what we're profiling, not just a ton of projects. And I think that's a big shift, you know, in terms of the way you know, people want to work for purpose-driven brands, don't they? Be human, I think, is probably the, the key thing. I think a lot, of, a lot of people just cover themselves up in this very professional wrapper. And they don't actually get to that human aspect, which people do actually really engage with. Maybe have other channels for that. Yeah. Um, I think two more points maybe is that just in terms of social media, I think it's not just a one-way thing. You need to engage with people and talk to people. And if someone's put a heart eyes emoji on your thing, the least you can do is like it and reply back with a, I don't know, wavy hands emoji. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not, it's not just a one-way thing, but you know, and comment on other people's things and, and celebrate other people's work. Thought leadership and content. Thought leadership and content is a massive area where built environment firms can really stand out from the competition and make the most of the amazing people that they employ. Let's start with Rachel Davis from Hawley from episode 55. We lead our marketing really with thought leadership. Um, yeah. And we do that for a couple of reasons. The first one is actually the importance of thought leadership internally, because you have to bring together the experts who are talking about a subject matter and you have to get some consensus around that. You have to get them to focus. What, you know, what are we going to go out and talk about? What are the challenges in this sector or, or, or whatever the scenario mm. is? And so you have to you're already bringing that um, different way of thinking internally in amongst your uh, engineers and specialists um, because we're not all just engineers here but you know so you're bringing yeah. the technical expertise together to discuss a bigger problem so that's really valuable in itself and then let's head on to episode 59 with my friend and content collaborator Stacey Meadwell where she shares her ways to find your expertise in your content we were working in sort of marketing and communications Think of stuff that, you know, that you've seen that you really liked or yeah. maybe fails. I mean, a brilliant example of this was um, the, I forget her name, the education minister who really messed up in a press interview, left her, oh, left her mic. There's been so many, Stacey, it could be any, couldn't it? <laughs> she be left, How many she, education ministers have we had? About seven. <laughs> but she <laughs> left, it was, it was, yeah, it was very, really recently and she left her mic on and got all, uh, and got a little bit sweary, uh, which wasn't good. And I saw somebody, I, I saw, I saw a, you know, a PR that I know share that and just share a few thoughts on sort of the mistakes that she'd made. Yeah. You know, it's a about sharing your expertise, which is a bit different to sharing what your company is is doing. Um, so, yeah, if you've if you've observed something, you've seen a bit of good marketing, or you know, I mean, it depends on whether whether you want to go down the route of trashing <laughs> try, trashing other things other people have done, and that can be a little bit a little bit risky. Measurement and return on investment in brackets ROI. Measurement is something I want to do more of next year because you know what? Being able to track customer journeys back to marketing campaigns and actual real business results is really the holy grail of marketing and it's something we've all got to be chasing. 
Anyway, to start with this segment, I'm going to kick off with Andrew Avias from Sylvie Materials and then head on to Christian Carfrey from Arab talking about how LinkedIn is helping him in his role. And Andrew is actually talking about TikTok. My manager and, you know, the CEO and president like to look at follower numbers because that's the only way they understand success. Right. Um, But we've grown um, pretty much by a thousand percent. Like our TikTok channel went from zero to now. I think we're at like 11,000 followers, Um, you know, but TikTok is one of those platforms where the number of followers don't matter because you can still – you can yeah. still get millions of views on a video with, you yeah. know, out having millions of followers. So, you know, we've hit a couple of videos that have hit, you know, 500,000 views, a million views um, and, and in that range. So we've 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 done very well in that sense. But same thing on Instagram. You know, we're we're about to cross the 10,000 follower mark. We've had videos that hit six million views, yeah. um, I think is our most successful video. So, you know, we're we're really growing uh, to a point where now my manager is getting more ideas on the type of content that we want to put on different platforms. And even better, uh, we're starting to think of hiring more help um, to make the content that we want to put on these platforms. We're really starting to become a media company um, in the wow. way that we're thinking. Yes. What benefits? I, I don't know, actually. I, I don't know directly. <laughs> it's it's like metrics. I'm going to go, whoa. No, it's good. no I'm, I'm not very good on the metrics, but it brings people like you who are interested. It brings it brings um, sideways correspondence. I get quite a lot of LinkedIn messages from people who are interested, who want to know about it more. It brings people who are interested to know about more about Arab. It brings people who want to join us. Yeah. You know, it, so it brings lots lots of different domains. I wouldn't, there's no killer answer, I think, is what I'm trying to say. But I think what I'm saying, hoping and i actually i probably do believe that you know if most of arab were doing similarly it would increase our our um impact considerably i think in a broad based way digital marketing i love digital marketing and i don't think many built environment firms actually do it very well there is a lot of room for us to make more impact and boost our results both online and offline so in this section, we're going to cover digital marketing and I'll start, of course, on my favourite channel, LinkedIn, with a few thoughts from me and also from Chris Moore from Price and Myers. So if I post something as IO rather than as a bass marketing, it's more it's going to get much more traction. And I think that's where company pages and stuff on LinkedIn aren't necessarily doing the right stuff, because in some ways, posting on your company page may actually be secondary in some ways what you might want to do is actually have different variations and encourage your people to actually be posting themselves directly but you give them the tools to do it and to tailor it in their own way and they tag your company because actually you get far more reach and reach far more people and also having their opinions helps your company page anyway so it's kind of like looking at it in that kind of way of actually how do you make it more valuable we had a partner um, tim lucas who's an engineer here who you may know and really clever guy, and he he literally he's like his first Instagram post. He'd only used uh, sorry uh, LinkedIn. He'd only used LinkedIn just to sort of keep up with what's going on, and then he put a post up about uh, a structure that he had repurposed and put in his kid's primary school as a play climbing frame. And my God, if it didn't get thousands and thousands of likes, and I'm kind of like that was a little bit of a bing moment for me. It's kind of like oh crap, we've got to get we've got to get better at this, don't we? The digital platforms are always changing, so it can be hard to keep up. In the next couple of clips, we get some sage advice from Stephen Drew and also from Chris Simmons talking about how to keep up and stay up to date with the social channels. When the algorithm changes some platforms, don't feel too emotionally attached to them because some people are like, oh, Instagram's my baby. And I'm like, do you know what? you got to just move on. I mean, the Architecture Community Forum was big in 2020 when the pandemic, busy, 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 busy. Yeah. However, less people use it right now. And that's okay. But in my business, then I pivot towards the podcast, the live streams, the polls, where people's exactly. going. And, and it's not a loss. You've got to move with things. You can't just stay attached to Instagram because they will change the algorithms and all that stuff. And you and also don't just go on one platform because you might, you know, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. You see a lot of architectural content on Instagram, which is nice pictures of nice buildings. And that's great. And I think that would have worked a while ago on Instagram for me. You know, back in the days when we were all impressed by a still image, but 
putting a couple of still images into a video, I don't think is quite going to crack it these days. Even if you put it to one of these cool tunes that all the kids are using. Then on to Andrew Apia from Sylvie Materials, who shared how his concrete firm blew up on TikTok. I see the same mistake all the time where it's like some head of sales person. Yeah. yeah, Some head of sales person who has no idea how to actually make video or edit a video to try to make content. Right. Because they don't have the eye for it. And I I give them credit for trying, but like, if you want to have a good mechanic, you need to hire a mechanic. Right. If you want to have a good driver, you need to hire a good driver. If you want to be good on TikTok, you need to hire someone who's good at TikTok. Right. It's, it's no different. Um, Yeah. You know, you don't want me driving the truck. So let me just say that, right? So you definitely, <laughs> right? So you want to make sure you're putting the right people, you know, into these positions. Event, networking, and BD. Events and in-person marketing and business development definitely were back in 2023. I did an episode with Nathan Spencer and Karen Willey about events and business development, which was jam-packed with tips. So let's get started with a tip from Nathan and Karen. I suppose a lot of it is that pre, pre-planned pre activity. So yeah. um, working with us to make sure that we're putting X, Y, or Z in a room with you. Um, without it being pre, it's a little bit more difficult to then do it at the event if you're prepared and know what you're doing. Um, and we've already set up those meetings or set up the content that's required. It's a little bit easier. But then certainly I would be bringing down um, both a diverse group of individuals to the, to the conference. Um, that means that... Um, f- from our side in particular, those people are always attracted to different things and the outcomes will be much better and much stronger. You need to ditch the pitch, you need to be yourself and you need to have fun and you need to talk to people and make some genuine connections. And I think that's really, really, that's some of the things that we always talk about. You're not you're not there to sell, you're there to start to build relationships. Business yeah. to business essentially is now, I think there's the terminology people to people. Yeah. And actually what you're trying to do is move relationships on and create new ones and cement ones that you've maybe had for a long time. And that, that's the way to think about business development. Yes, there will be opportunities that will come out of those relationships, but focus on the relationship that you want with that person. If you're enjoying yourself with someone and you're getting on with them and you know what, just go with the flow because that will stand you in so much better stead in the future. And I'll leave the final words in this section to Andy Matthews from episode 53. I think there's so many awkward events and I think not understanding what networking is when you start out is quite quite interesting you kind of always look for the clients but actually it's just about talking to people isn't it and yeah it's quite hard to track that return but you, you just the more people you talk to and the more people you engage with you know the better it is but yeah the cold the cold conversations are the hardest and finally as it's cop this month I thought I would leave the closing comment to Tristram Carfrey from Arup in episode 47 if we want to really pursue sustainable development and, and help make the world a better place, then you have to engage with everybody around you. You have to get everybody on board the bus, if you like. And, and therefore, you have to be positively influential, t- talking about it, you know, selling your message and getting, a, getting collective agreement and buy-in. So what's happening to the show in 2024? Well... In 2024, I've got more in-person interviews lined up. I've already got a deep dive into AI set up for the end of January, and I'll be traveling up to Leeds to go to UK Reef again. So there's lots to look forward to. And in terms of my business about marketing, I'll be doing more speaking and training for built environment firms. So if that's of interest to you, do drop me a line. And I'll also be delivering more digitally led marketing campaigns to drive real business results. And again, get in touch if you want to talk about that. So just leaves me to say thanks so much to all of my guests, all of my listeners and my VA, Erin Buck, and my editor, James Eady, who helped me put all of this together. And the show will be back at the end of January, early February. See you then and have a great Christmas. Was it easier being like, because you're in Property Week, like, you know, people want to speak to you? (laughs) It's Estates Gazette, I would say, rather than Sorry. Pro- rather than Property Week. <laughs> <laughs> Iowa Bass, marketing, con- mar- marketing consultant, marketing consultant. Or feel free to drop me an email at io at a bus, a b- oh, bus. And how to break out of the boring and mix things up a bit. 
And you, you said and, and now I've got to say and, and it sounds a bit weird. <laughs> oh, God. There's an and there. There's an and there, and it's not there. It's fine. I know, but it's too, it's too many ands in a row. It sounds weird. Sorry, I'm, I'm editing. I'm editing. <laughs> okay, one more time. Okay. We've got it. Thanks so much for listening to the Built Environment Marketing Show. Don't forget to check out the show notes, which will have useful links and resources connected to this episode. You can find that on abassmarketing.com. And of course, if you like the show, please do share it with others on social as it helps more people to find us. See you soon.